Hey, good morning. Let's uh, pray and then let's get into this morning's class. All right. Uh, anyone from the online batch for a change, if you would like to lead us in prayer, you can lead and then we'll we'll go ahead. Sister Pooja, would you be able to lead? Okay. I'm not sure. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Shanmishta, yes, please. You can go ahead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful platform. You are giving us this opportunity to join in this Google Classroom and to have the instruction from our Pastor Nancy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity. Help our pastor to give the uh, give this message and help her to and help each one of us to understand and to have the revelation from your word. Help each one of us to get more and more strengthened by your word and help us to develop our prayer life. Yes, Lord, help us to build up more in our faith, in our understanding of your word. Help this class. I ask this prayer in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sharmishta. Really appreciate that. We'll get back to our chapter 8, where we were learning about the believer's walk of faith and how the entire journey needs to be made with faith. We start with faith when we are saved. How are we saved? We are saved by grace through faith, which is the reference Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. Okay, so this we have to remember. This is how we were saved. Now, moving forward, we said that everything must be done by faith because we walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. So all activities, all decisions, uh, everything in our life must be based on faith. And then we spoke about how without having faith in God, we cannot receive from God's provisions, His blessings, and that is why we need to employ faith when we are praying or any any aspect at all. We are reaching out to God, believing in His word, His promises. Faith is what will pull that into our lives. So uh, there is one, um, you know, there's one uh, uh, reference like where Paul writes, "What whatever they heard, they did not mix it with faith." So when we don't mix what we hear with faith, it is useless. I mean, I'm just putting it straight because it will only be uh, uh, it'll only be knowledge. So when I say it will not be to you of use to us, it means that it will not produce what God has intended, right? In that sense. So of course, we may gain some information or knowledge, but it will not produce God's best in our lives. That's why the word has to be mixed with faith. So even when we um, listen to God's word, we are reading God's word, we need a heart of faith. That's what will make what is in that word, the power in that word, the, um, you know, the hope in that word, the life in that word to come in and uh, take charge. So that's how we must mix it with faith. And um, it is faith that helps us to receive from God. We also discussed that faith helps us to walk in victory. It's through faith that we conquer uh, in difficult situations, circumstances. As long as we have faith, we have victory. But if we lack faith, then we cannot make it to the finish line. Now, moving on, we also talked about faith uh, as a shield against the enemy, that it's <coughs> really very necessary for us to protect ourselves and this is done by faith also 
Satan is after our faith because once he can destroy the faith that we have, everything else is destroyed. So that's the reason we must preserve our faith. And once we preserve our faith, that also acts as a protection against Satan. Right? So this is how faith works. We went on to talking about faith connected with receiving the promise of the Holy Spirit. And we stopped there. So basically what we said is we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Promise of the Spirit is the term used for baptism in the Holy Spirit. So promise of the Father. You will receive the promise of the Father. When did it first happen? It happened in? Acts, Acts chapter 2 from verse 17, we see there how God poured out his spirit. This was prophesied by prophet Joel, okay, several years ahead, but it finally happened. And Jesus told in Acts chapter 1, he told the believers that you need to wait, wait, and you will receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So the believers waited. How many people waited? 120 people waited in the upper room and they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Obviously, when they received it, they received it by faith. So even today, for us, we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit by faith. Galatians 3 verse 14, where Paul writes to the Galatians, he says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit Spirit through faith. Promise of the Spirit through faith. So one needs to believe when we pray and ask God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is applicable uh, for both the person who is praying as well as the person who is believing to receive. So when I pray, Usually in the book of Acts, the way they used to pray is they used to lay hands on people. Common practice. It's not that without laying hands, people can't receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because in Acts 10, without Peter laying hands, Cornelius and his household received baptism. So even without laying hands, people can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But generally, what we do is we lay hands. Because that was the common practice of the early church. So we lay hands. How do we lay hands? with faith. So when I am praying for someone, I believe that they will receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So by faith, we say, receive the Holy Spirit. That's how they prayed in the book of Acts. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. So we say, receive the Holy Spirit. That's how we pray over people. And people receive it. Now the person who has prayed also and who is trusting God must believe that God will pour out his Spirit. So where is faith? Both sides, the person who's praying as well as the person who is receiving. Now, both of us uh, need to trust God that when we ask for the Holy Spirit, God will give the Holy Spirit. You remember, we discussed from Luke chapter 11, where Jesus made it very clear that, you know, a father will not give a son the opposite of what he has asked for. A father will not give a son something that will harm him. So, in conclusion, the end of verse 13 there, he says, How much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, he's made it very clear, like no doubt. If you ask for Holy Spirit, you will get what? Holy Spirit. Many people get scared, they get worried. They say, if I ask for the Holy Spirit, what if I receive some other spirit? Or what if I uh, speak from my own mind? A lot of people have these doubts, confusions, worry, fear. But Jesus assured us. He said, look, any human father also will give you a good gift if you ask for something. Why will I give you something else? So by faith, when you ask me for Holy Spirit, Either for our own baptism, if we have not received it, or we are praying for somebody, we must believe that they will get what? They will get the Holy Spirit baptism. Okay, so by faith, spirit of promise, by faith. Without faith, this can't happen. 
no receiving no praying for someone also only when there is faith it is effective okay so that's the reason we pray by faith and we receive by faith now let's continue we look at verse 7 where it talks about the exercise of spiritual gifts okay what are these spiritual gifts romans 12 verse 6 where he says uh, i mean there are many gifts but there are a couple of passages where you learn about grace gifts and then you learn about holy spirit gifts so romans 12 is one such passage first corinthians 12 is another passage okay so now let's quickly look at romans 12 romans 12 verse 6 uh, could someone read it it's in the notes having then gifts differing uh, differing according to the grace mm -hmm. that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proper proportion to our faith okay wonderful so in romans 12 we learn about uh, you know different gifts that god has given we call them grace gifts uh, like teaching leadership administration giving right even prophecy it's it's included here as a grace gift so we are being told that god gifts gives gifts to all so we all have differing gifts you know and uh, when we have these differing gifts how can we operate in these differing gifts let's imagine you know i have the gift i have the gift of prophecy how to use it or how to see a flow of the gift of prophecy from my life faith if there is faith the gifts will flow if there is no faith the gifts will not flow that's what it says look at the last part it says if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith so let's imagine we learned about the gifts and we have little faith right little bit of faith to operate in the prophetic gift so we start operating then we learn more about prophecy we learn um, you know we experience prophecy uh, delivering a prophetic word and what it is doing in people's lives so our faith goes up little more faith so now how do we operate at that level of faith right in proportion to our faith proportion to our faith means how much of faith i have that much the gift will operate so if i have less faith gift will operate less if i have more faith there will be a greater operation of the gift so this is not just applicable to grace gifts but in first corinthians 12 we have nine gifts of the holy spirit that are listed so we have gifts such as tongues interpretation of tongues prophecy um you know discerning of spirits word of wisdom word of knowledge um then gift of faith right well what till two more healings and miracles okay so i guess i missed one but uh, all of these will operate by faith so then how do we how do we apply very simple learn more about it practice more right then faith will increase then we'll keep operating at the next level so operate according in proportion to the faith so that gives us a very good key the key is increase faith increase the operation of the grace gifts as well as the gifts of the holy spirit so faith is very important faith is very important that's why uh, like in general in life it's very important but in ministry we are serving people so how do we serve people we have to come from a place of faith right grace gift we are teaching we are encouraging we are doing administrative work we're doing all that we're not just simply doing it with faith we do so when we do that by faith then it operates 
right at the level that god wants it to um, bless people same way gifts of the holy spirit not simply first of all it won't operate you it won't work if there's no faith but when it is operational we keep growing in our faith level and with faith when we are releasing the gifts then it becomes a blessing so this is how we consider the gifts and operating in the gifts okay in galatians 3 there is a portion in our notes galatians 3 verse 2 3 and um, uh, verse 5 where paul is rebuking the galatians the galatian believers they received some teaching about uh, uh, circumcision so they were trying to shift to living for god by the by works and not just by faith so paul speaks a lot about faith to the galatians and he says look you receive the spirit by faith verse 3 he says having begun in the spirit are you now being made perfect by the flesh so basically he says why are you why are you moving away from faith you know you're moving into uh, uh, depending on yourselves because they were depending on they were starting to depend on works for salvation so let's not misunderstand works are important works are the the um, you know working out of our faith so that's that's the order it shouldn't be the other way around where we depend on works for our salvation you know like how much i pray how much i do this uh, how much i uh, how how religious i am how much you know church i attend based on all this i will be saved no the bible clearly says we are saved uh, by grace god's grace and through faith so that is the order but for the galatians it was kind of shifting so he was he tried to stop them and he said you begun in the spirit now why are you moving on to the uh, depending on the flesh and in verse 5 you know again he he puts the emphasis on faith he says therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith now notice he says the working of miracles how does god do it the hearing of faith again for the manifestation of um, uh, miracles healings supernatural right supernatural work of god we can put all this in the category of the supernatural how will the supernatural manifest faith no faith no manifestation or less faith less manifestation more faith greater the manifestation so that's how we understand so for all the gifts and the working of the supernatural one needs faith when there is faith um you know like sometimes you just see that like when we are struggling to believe things don't happen but when we are strong enough and we are able to believe so many amazing things happen so remember i said satan what is he after he's after our faith if we can put doubt if we can put worry unbelief and it can get planted in our minds hearts easy he knows ah, now they are lacking faith nothing will work so that's why he's after our faith but we as believers we have to make every effort to build up and strengthen our faith so there is one uh, example of this lame man in acts chapter 6 uh, acts chapter 3 when uh, J peter and john they go to the gate beautiful so there is this gate right uh, um like in the premises of the temple so they are going for the usual daily prayers but when they go for the prayer they see there is a lame man he is lame for his whole life and uh, later on when we read right we find out that he was 40 years old so from birth he has never walked 40 years old so something amazing happens this man is looking at uh, peter and john but he peter and john first they say you know look at us and then they minister 
uh, they minister the power of God. What do they say? They say silver and gold we don't have because he was trying to beg or get arms from them. So they clarify to him, look, silver, gold, we don't have, money, we don't have, but what we have, right? We, we give to you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So they had faith to minister a miracle. We call this a miracle. Why do we call it a miracle? Because something which is non-existent is now existent. Okay, healing is uh, healing is when, let's say, something went bad. It was okay, but it it went wrong in terms of the health or the system. And there is restoration. Mostly we refer to that as healing. But miracle is when uh, originally nothing is there. Like this man born lame. So obviously there were certain certain systems or you could say some tissues. We don't know what the problem was. Something was missing. Maybe the nerves were not active. Something was wrong. But it was a miracle because he just started walking. Okay. But how did this happen? How did this man receive the miracle? Remember earlier in, Gal in uh, Galatians 3, we saw uh, that miracles... God supplies the spirit to you and works miracles. And then towards the end, by the hearing of faith, by the hearing of faith. So God does miracles by faith. And in this particular incident, you know, later on, um, they clarify, Peter and John clarify, Acts 3.16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. So what exactly happened in this man's case? When they said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. When they spoke the name of Jesus, faith caused him to rise up and walk. So faith releases miracles. Faith and miracles are connected. The more the faith, the greater the manifestation of miracles. And at, in Acts 3, it happened. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man was made strong. So again, the same verse says, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So it was faith in Jesus name. Obviously, Peter and John had faith. And uh, sometimes to describe this episode, we also say that uh, it was a gift of faith. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly to believe the impossible. Like, can you imagine? Someone's not walked for 40 years. How can you believe that they're going to stand up right now? It takes immense faith to do something like that. But in that moment, right, in that moment, Peter and John must have received, you know, that prompting by the Holy Spirit. They were sensitive. So God opened their hearts to realize this is the moment. So they believed, yeah, it's possible. Now it's possible. And they had faith. And the man also obviously had faith, faith in the name of Jesus. And the miracle happened. So miracles happen through faith. So when there is faith, miracles will manifest. Okay, and the opposite is true. If there is no faith, there'll be less miracles or no miracles. So that's why uh, we must encourage faith. We'll go to the following chapters where we learn how to nurture our faith so that we can apply for ourselves also. And we can also apply it to uh, the people whom we work with. See, maybe uh, we have a small group of young people that we are speaking to, maybe a life group, or um, you know, uh, we we may be ministering to um, a set of you know people in a school, college, or a workplace, uh, or a congregation. Maybe you know people are leading churches. So when we preach, when we preach, when we teach, the way we should preach and teach is with clarity of the word. So when there is clarity of the word what happens people's faith goes up so if you're not preaching the word 
then there's no question of faith. Faith is of the heart. Yes or no? Faith is of the heart. So now, one needs to preach and teach in such a way that the heart starts to gain faith. Now, what if we don't teach the word? And if we just, you know, anything just to inspire, motivate. Inspiration and motivation can help to some extent. At the soul level, people will be pumped up. They'll say, wow, what a nice service, amazing. You know, you go back. It will last for some time. It will last for one week, maybe one month. After that, it will fizzle out. But what about the word? We'll study. In the next chapter, we'll study. The word is the miracle seed of God. It's a miracle seed. So when we preach the word, it will go and be planted in the heart. And uh, it's, like, it's like tending a garden. So as you're putting seeds each time, life emerges. So faith is there and uh, you know the heart is filled with with um, the word of god and later on it produces a harvest so that's the right way to develop the people to take the word maybe you know for some of us it's a struggle we are saying i can't i don't know too much one verse do you know and do you understand one verse the clarity of that verse start there you know sometimes it's as uh, simple as that that's what god wants us to do faith that one scripture, share with someone, say, you know, the scripture, it means this, uh, this is what it is. It may not be like 40 minutes, one hour, you're delivering a huge sermon, no problem. But what did we just do? One word of God, miracle seed of God's word planted in somebody's heart. Right? And it will bear fruit. It can bear eternal fruit as well. So that's the ministry that helps raise faith. So we are raising faith in the group that we are working with. And then what happens? Miracles start happening. You know, the supernatural starts being demonstrated. People come with testimonies. They say, oh, you know, uh, you prayed, this happened. Uh, you, um, uh, we all gathered together. We all prayed about this matter and God intervened. Many, many, many testimonies. Reason is, word is working faith has gone up so that's the way we build up you know any congregation so we raise up even when we are preaching not just that sunday but in general right all the sermons the teaching material everything is geared towards building up the faith so faith is going up god's holy spirit begins to work and do miracles in people's lives and they receive the miracles now, as far as uh, Satan is concerned, what he'll do is he'll try to bring two major problems or two major hindrances. One is fear. So he knows that when there is faith, miracles can happen. So instead of faith, he may bring fear and say, um, let's take, for example, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the gift of prophecy. He'll say, is it correct? Is it wrong? It is from your mind. You know, you're speaking from your mind. Don't say anything. It, it, it can, you can be uh, put to shame in front of people. So what's happening? Slowly fear is coming into our hearts. So then we allow fear and we say, I won't share that prophetic word. Or, you know, whatever it is God, that God is calling us to do. Maybe even tongues. We are praying in tongues and suddenly fear comes and you're like, oh, I'm speaking of my own mind. I'll stop. I won't speak in tongues. So through, faith, through fear, Satan can stop us. But we must not allow Satan to stop us. We must always remember what Paul wrote to Timothy. Timothy was mentored by Paul. So 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 and 7, he says, For you have not received the spirit of fear, okay, but you have received a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So we need to tell ourselves, why am I fearful? I've not received a spirit of fear, but I have a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So overcome the fear by speaking God's word and take a step. Take a step of faith. 
and operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So fear is one hindrance that will come. Second hindrance that Satan tries to bring is condemnation. So I've heard somebody say that we are not defeated by others. Usually we are defeated by our own sense of unworthiness. Because Satan tries to use that against us. When God teaches us new things and encourages us, okay, you go now, you know, take the step, um, you use your gifts, you minister to someone. What happens? Satan will put a thought in our minds. But, you know, you're not reading your Bible enough. You're not praying enough. You know, you're not so spiritual. Come on. How can you do this? Not today. You do after one year. You become better. and you. So what does he do? He's playing with our minds. And he's not allowing us to do what God is telling us to do. So what we intend to do is we back off. We say, I'm not worthy. You know, um, or a lot of condemnation. You're like this. You're like that. You remember you failed. So this goes on and on in ourselves. So before we can do something, we stop ourselves. So who wins? Satan. What did he do? He just played a game of accusation or condemnation. And he usually plays that game with all of us all the time. Because he knows if we buy into the condemnation, an outsider does not have to stop us. We will stop ourselves. Because we don't feel worthy. We don't feel worthy to serve God. We don't feel worthy to lead worship. We don't feel worthy to preach or pray for anyone. Right? So these two things Satan will use. Fear and condemnation. Be careful with that because it will stop the flow of the gifts in our lives. Okay. So um, yeah. So that is something to bear in mind. Step out in faith. And finally, the last point here, it's about fighting the good fight of faith. Ultimately, our entire life is a fight of faith. So when we go down fighting, that's honorable. You know, any soldier who goes to battle, if any soldier, you know, turned his back, ran and came back home, will he get applause? People say, oh, such a coward. We sent you for war and you turned and came back. What is this? But when there is a soldier, usually we see that you know, somebody went into battle and there are times when people were even martyred. They, were fight they went down fighting. What happens? There's great applause. There's credits given to their names. And, you know, we, we, are, we are so appreci appreciating of such people because they were true warriors. They had faith till the end. So Paul writes to Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 verse 12. Uh, can someone read it out? It's in our notes. Fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Lay hold on external life, eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Yes. So Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So fight. We are supposed to fight in this Christian life. And later on, Paul will also explain. He'll say that, um, you know, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. So even Paul, in all the work that he did, he did like missionary journeys, planted churches, wrote epistles, so many things he did. But he, he summarizes everything as what? I fought a good fight. I finished the race. Good fight. What fight? Same fight. Fight of faith. So what is the fight that each one of us is fighting? It's a fight of faith. In every situation, uh, we, we want to be faithful to God, right? And we want to have the faith of God in us. So we are battling through each situation. Fight a good fight of faith. So when it says fight, what does it mean? 
why should we fight why didn't it say walk a good walk of faith fight good fight fight it's difficult it's difficult um in the world you know this world is corrupted by sin so by virtue of that there are many challenges now in addition to that we have um you know peter writes that we have an enemy he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so we also have a very active enemy who is on the job all the time you know whether you're resting or not he's not resting he's he's plotting like okay how can i get these people down how can i uh, tempt them how can i condemn them so many things so he's actually always on the move trying to bring us down so in these circumstances if one has to stand again going back to the wrestling analogy right when one is wrestling even to stand or even to not be put down they are putting some effort without that you can't even stand because your opponent will crush you it's the same thing for our christian life every day for us we have to stand firm stand steadfast fight the good fight of faith if we are not we don't have a mindset like that then we are an easy target for satan he'll think ah these people are chill relax come on let's get them but in the spirit we must be people who are always alert because uh, you know someone said that for a christian for a believer we everything is the mission field everything is a battle field we're living in battle zone so it's not about one day god sending us to the battle zone no every day is battle zone this way or that way if we are not careful to live for god satan can get us down so it's a fight of faith for the entire lifetime and so nice even jesus said you know tetelestai he said it is finished he did his he did his uh, uh, assignment what was mandated over jesus's life he conquered he finished boldly he said i finished father whatever you told me to do i finished paul is saying uh, you know i I've, i've fought the good fight i finished the race that is the conclusion we all need for our lives so whenever we finish at the journey of our life we should be able to say i finished i fought the good fight of faith okay so let's remember this uh, the fight is a fight of faith and uh, we must maintain keep maintain and guard our faith you know it is also said that generally when people start okay when people uh, start their um, journey as a believer or when people start the ministry there's a lot of passion one starts with like okay we'll go for the stars we'll do this we'll do that but as you're journeying through the journey is not it's not a straight road so there are ups and downs there are struggles there are many things that go on but it's not so much about the starting as much as it is about the finishing everyone can start but how many will finish it's those who finish who get the prize so that's the analogy but what are we trying to say you know all of us are believers it's not that god is going to disqualify any of us because he gave he paid uh, you know uh, for us with his own life so as long as we are walking in alignment to his word his purposes we will reach the finish line but how are we going to reach the finish line we should be confident enough to say i have fought the good fight of faith i have finished the race so starting with full energy and then losing it yeah that that's that's not how god wants us to finish he wants us to in fact finish stronger so that's a better thing to keep in mind finish strong we must keep increasing get stronger and stronger finish when we reach the finish line finish strong okay not just survive have anyone seen these um, 
know, 400 meters races or, you know, much more than that also sometimes. That's probably the minimum now. But when people uh, pass the uh, baton or baton and they run, you notice that it's only a few teams that are surviving towards the end. In the beginning, all are running with like high energy. But by the time if 10 folks started, there are only three teams that are still running. Okay? And uh, among them, it's only one who's the winner. So that we need to learn a lesson from that. So God wants us to get stronger. We have to live in such a way that we get stronger and we finish strong. Whether it is the life as a believer or in the ministry. It's not to start with full energy and fizzle out later on. Okay, so this is a reminder for us that one must finish strong. Now, we can move on to the next chapter. Yeah, I'll just give us an introduction because there's a little bit of time left. And um, for next week, since, since um, many of us are going for youth missions, the, you know, the residential students, what I'm planning to do is to pre-record two lectures. So two lectures for next week because both of those classes will be missing. So the lectures will be pre-recorded. You can watch it. Okay, even online students, you'll not have a class as such. You can just watch the pre-recorded lectures, and that should be sufficient. But next week, there will be two lectures. Don't miss it. You'll be able to find them on Google Classroom. The link will be posted. So you just click there, go watch the lecture. So that's the plan for next week. So let me quickly share a little bit, and then we'll close for today. Chapter 9 is about nurturing our faith. So we just now spoke about finishing strong. It is possible because uh, one can nurture, one can develop faith. Okay, So faith can be small when we get started, but we can work on it and it can get stronger as we journey through lives. And this is what we want to look at. So when we um, talk about faith, the good news is that faith can grow. So we don't have to remain where we, we were yesterday or where we are today. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have more faith. And that's how one must journey. So when Paul writes to the Thessalonians, um, you know, he, he says in 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 3, to four. I'm going to read it out. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Okay, so there is the appreciation for the Thessalonians. Uh, it's a group of people. Paul spent some time in Thessalonica, but he had to quickly leave because there was a lot of persecution. So he couldn't spend so much time. But still, what is the good thing about the believers in that place? They didn't stop believing. They continued in God. And that's why he's saying, you know, we thank God always for you because you're that you're a kind of people who didn't give up there's so much opposition but still you're all trusting god you're believing god and he says your faith grows exceedingly so that is what he is happy about that uh, they are not at the same level of faith where they were earlier but now they have increased now another thing that is connected to their faith is Love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. Okay, so what kind of people were these people? They were people filled with faith and they also loved each other. What a powerful combination. Faith, love. Remember, we did 1 Corinthians 13. These three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. So we can imagine how effective their faith was. Because faith is there, love is also abounding. 
these are the kind of people that the Thessalonians were. And, you know, he also congratulates them for their patience. He says, look, you people are so patient and you have faith in, uh, in persecution and tribulation. So these are the qualities that are all working together, making the Thessalonians a very effective set of believers. Okay, now we can look at one more aspect and I will stop with that. How, now that we understood that faith can grow, a set of believers who, you know, who had a very short exposure to Paul's ministry initially, even they were able to develop themselves because, um, you know, they remained in the faith and uh, they gave, gave priority to God's word. So they grew, their faith grew. So that helps us know our faith can grow. How can faith grow first key through the word of God? So how to develop our faith through the word of God? Now we all know Romans 10, 17. What does it say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith will come by hearing. Hearing what? No, hearing simply means... Um, it's, it's not just us hearing as an externally hearing, but being sensitive to the word of God in the spirit. So as we are sensitive to the word of God in the spirit, any exposure to the word, so we are hearing, we are uh, reading, we are, um, what can we say, um, yeah, meditating, Right? Meditating is also another way. We are thinking about the word, thinking or applying the word, practicing. We are being obedient to the word. In all these, as we are engaging with the word in all these ways, faith will increase. So that's the point. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So more and more engagement in the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That word there is rema. Okay, so there are two two um, uh, words that are used to describe the word. Okay. One is logos, other is rema. Logos means the written word of God or the written revelation, or written truth of God, which we have in the form of the Bible. Okay. So this is the logos. So logos already has God's ideas, thoughts, his revelation, anytime we can read it. But Rema, uh, Rema is inspired, inspired word of God. So it's it's like, you know, a prophetic word that we get from the Lord, where God just inspires by his spirit and he speaks to us. And Rema also literally means utterance. It's like God's utterance. God has spoken. So how can I, how can I, uh, hear from God. One is, as we said, read, uh, meditate, practice, and also speak. So one can hear the utterance of God in all these ways, because you're hearing it in the spirit. Now, in the natural, for us to hear God's word, there can be two ways. One is when we are hearing somebody else speak it. That's when, you know, someone's preaching, Someone's reading out some passage, utterance. It goes into our spirit. The other way is we can speak it ourselves. So when I'm loudly saying God's word, I'm still hearing, right? So we don't have to wait for somebody to read it. My own voice can release that utterance into my spirit. So these are the practices that we can uh, apply in our lives. So read out the word of God loudly. And as we do that, speak the word of God loudly. It's actually going into your spirit. So there are people, we'll come to the next subject. It's on meditation. How to meditate the word of God. Okay. Uh, in that we'll, we'll learn. Like we basically expose every sense that we have to God's word. So that it can go in, you know, and it can go in and go in and build us up. So, um, yeah, I think I'll wait to share about that in the uh, recordings. Okay. So let us stop here. We'll stop for now. Time is up. Okay. Uh, yes, Pooja?
No, Pastor, sorry, by mistake. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, so let's pray and uh, we will close then. So online, someone prayed to start. How about one of us here pray to close today's class? Where's the mic? Just pass it around then. Oh, Heavenly Father, thanks for this time. Father, thanks for these valuable words that we have been learned today. Father, we should need to improve more faith in everything, Father. Using our faith, we should need to do a lot of works in your ministry, Father. Father, we should need to apply everything in our life, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day and a good weekend.